Good morning. Welcome back. My name is John. I'm from Orphan Car Garage. I'm located in Abington, Massachusetts, and we are the purveyors of affordable classic cars. Today is March 22nd, 2023. Again, the sun is shining. It's about 60 degrees. Sunny. It's a perfect day to profile this iconic convertible that I have here in front of me. The year is 1964, and when you drove this car off the showroom floor and took it home, you were letting the world know that you had made it because in Cadillac's words, they were the standard of the world and not too many people would have argued with that back at that time. This particular car is incredibly striking and really would have had your neighbors take notice because it's finished in what Cadillac called Torino Turquoise. This is a 1964, as I mentioned, and it's part of the second generation of DeVilles by Cadillac. It's the last year of the second generation, 1964 said by many to be the best of that generation. And why? Well, in 1964, your engine was upgraded from 1963 from a 390 cubic inch V8 to a 429 cubic inch V8. Also, the transmission was no longer a turbo hydromatic, but a 400 turbo hydromatic transmission, an upgraded transmission for General Motors that debuted this year. It turned out to be a very reliable transmission and used in many muscle car applications in the late 1960s. So a lot of firsts for 1964, but also a last year for a rather iconic trait that Cadillac sort of almost invented, and that is the tail fin. By 1964, they were relegated to just this after their height in 1959. And this was its final year, the, the iconic tail fin from Cadillac. I think this is the perfect size for this car and it sets off the styling just perfectly. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the large tail fins from 1959 or 1960. Once they started to shorten them, I thought they were much more classy. And this really, really works for me as far as styling goes. Just subtle enough, but still an ode to Cadillac and their tail fin craze. Sadly, in 1965, with the redesign of the DeVille model, those disappeared. So although we have a lot of firsts for 1964, we had some lasts. Kind of a good combination good year to get sort of an iconic car in style so this particular car I purchased out of Florida about two years ago it had been with the same family for decades and it was thoroughly restored in the early 1980s I know that because the photos I have of the restoration are on Polaroid one step were taken on a Polaroid one step camera you know the ones you shook to try to develop quicker that never really worked but made us feel better. <laughs> we had one of those cameras when I was a kid. Uh, and the pictures I have of the restoration are on Polaroid One Step photos. So that's how old I know the restoration is. Also, the cars in the background at the body shop were definitely early to mid 1980s cars. So this restoration is old, 40 plus years old. And there are many things on the car that show the age of the restoration. From here, the car looks like a show winner, but we'll get up close and I'll show you some flaws. This is not a show winning car, but rather a very reliable turnkey driver that will be affordable to people without deep pockets because these cars can get very, very pricey the better condition they are. This car is a perfect combination of uh, affordability and drivability as far as I'm concerned. We'll start with the top and I purposely uh, profiling the car with the roof up because I want people to see how nice the top is. We just had that rear window replaced literally two weeks ago because the one from 40 years ago was a little foggy. So we had that rear window replaced, but the top itself is in absolutely beautiful condition. That is not an expensive job. If you buy a Cadillac from this vintage that needs a convertible top, you're easily looking at $2,500 or $3,000. And it's not a job that someone wants to do on their own. Every guy that I've talked to that has tried to do their own convertible tops have always regretted it. So that's an expensive job right there that you don't have to worry about on this car whatsoever. It's a power operated top, of course, and it works fine. Many pictures of this car with the roof down on my website. Interior appears to be very original and very, very presentable. The gentleman added seat belts which probably weren't there in 1964, but that's a nice addition to see. Cool fold-down fold armrest. A little bit of a repair there on the bottom of the armrest. Again, this is a high-quality driver car 
Not a 100 point show car. I can't stress that enough. Back seat, that cool middle speaker, the side panels are all in very good working order. As far as electronics go, the power windows all work fine. All four power windows, no issues at all. The car also has a power seat and the power seat works fine. Tilt forward, backward, everything works on the power seat. Cool crank for the vent window. I always thought that was so neat. The car is equipped with air conditioning. Another first for 1964 was automatic temperature control. And this car is so equipped. The problem with that was it was rather complicated for 1964 and nowadays can be a little bit tricky to diagnose and repair. The air conditioner in this car has had extensive amounts of work done to it. You'll see that in the photos I have on my website of the underside of the hood which by the way is very nicely detailed and very presentable. There's a brand new compressor. There's a belt hooked up to the compressor. It looks as though it's been converted to R134 refrigerant. So someone had the AC working in this car at one time. I cannot get it to operate on the auto temp setting. The idea was that you use this wheel to set the temperature in the car. There's a sensor right there on top of the dash temperature sensor and it worked automatically to keep both your heat and air conditioning to the temperature you wanted. Uh, rather ingenious for 1964 and this was the first car to offer it but a little bit complicated and a little bit more difficult to diagnose issues with today. So I, I full disclosure there is some work that needs to be done on that. Anybody that's in the know on those systems could probably fix it in an afternoon. I just don't have one of those guys handy to me. So car is equipped with AC, but I'm going to say that it doesn't work currently, probably because of that ATC system. AM radio, which powers up, but mostly static, comes out of the speakers. Cool uh, vintage floor mat. Carpets are nice. There's a little hole there in the carpet. You can see the floors are very clean underneath. It's an aftermarket carpet, probably installed in the 80s. The original door panels, again, are in fine condition. Just a real nice turnkey cruiser for you and the family. It's a big, heavy door. So the paint, again, 40 years old, not perfect. There's some blemishes in the paint. There's, a, there's one right there. There's a couple more right there. We had the paint corrected as best we could, and we did get a little bit of a gleam out of it, as you can see, but it's far from perfect. It's a driver quality paint. A couple of bubbles, there's another blemish there. A uh, couple of bubbles here down the corner of the door. A couple of scratches there. A couple more bubbles there. So you see as I go around, it's not a perfect car. But that's going to keep the price down too. Nice chrome. Very nice chrome. No issues on the chrome at all. So there'll be no expense spent there. It's all in fitting, keeping with the condition of the car. Now the paint blemish there on the trunk lid. As we go around the passenger side, overall very straight, but there's some bubbling. There's some there, a couple more there. Scratch here on the passenger door. What's great about this car is you can drive it. You can just get in it, turn the key, because it's very turnkey. We put some money into it mechanically. So did the gentleman before us. And it's a very turnkey cruiser. So you could take this car to the grocery store or to Dairy Queen, the beach, and park it and not have to worry about it. You don't have to panic because someone may scratch it because it's already scratched. If you wanted to take the car to another level, you certainly could and you probably wouldn't lose any money. These cars are rising in value. Front bumpers are in very nice condition. The bezels, again, good chrome until you get over here and there's a spot right here that I'll show you right there. A little bit of that chrome is peeled and there's a little bit of surface rust underneath it. Not terrible, but enough that I want to point it out. Everything works, all the lights, the wipers. Again, the power windows all work fine. The power top works to spec. Power seat works fine. Air conditioning, eh, you know, it's, it's operating, the fan works, but I just can't get the temperature, automatic temperature system to work in it. Again, somebody in the know on these systems, and I'm sure there's some guys out there that know that system pretty well, could probably fix it in a couple hours. 
There's a brand new AC compressor under the hood, a brand new belt. Again, it looks like it's been converted to 134. So it had to have been operating at some point in the not so distant past, but I'm gonna be full, fully honest with you and tell you that it's not working currently. So that's about it. There's a lot of pictures of this car on my website. We're gonna list it on Hemmings and on eBay with a buy it now and a best offer. And our asking price on this car is going to be $24,900. $24,009. I would just leave it the way it is and drive it. Just protect it. Keep it clean. Have a lot of fun with it. You won't have to invest anything into it if you don't want to. As you can see, the car is very presentable as is, but not perfect this is not a 100 point cadillac i need i can't stress that enough the undercarriage is just as clean as the top surfaces there's some scale under there but nothing bad there's been no sign of any major body work per, done to it there was some metal work done in the 1980s that i can see on those one-step polaroid photos but metal no bondo i see metal panels being welded in at the very lower quarter panels and at the very lower front fenders i have pictures of that it's metal. It was a professional body shop that did the restoration and no expense was spared. It's just old. It's a 40 year old restoration. So $24,900. My name is John. My phone number is 508-954-8090. Check me out on the web, orphancargarage.com. Of course, subscribe to my page here on YouTube. We got a lot of cool stuff rolling out in the next couple months. Spring is springing here, down here, and up here in Massachusetts. Um, and I think you're gonna like what you see. Lots of cars that fit into lots of different budgets. Thanks for watching. I appreciate the support. Tell all your friends.